Hello everyone, welcome to Bloodworth's Zelda Diaries, uh, the 10th and uh, final planned episode uh, for this series. Uh, it's been a fun time, uh, and it's definitely weird to sort of wrap it up in a way <laughs> when I like, I'm still a very long way from beating the game, uh, but you know, I've, I've sort of felt like 10 episodes is the right spot, uh, and I did find something that I consider a bit of an ending, and we never really we're going for story anyways, right? And I'm probably going to play this, like I said, throughout the next few weeks, uh, at the very least, uh, if not uh, months from now, continue to play it. Uh, but uh, it had actually been a while um, since the last time I played. I, I got onto my Switch and it's uh, been like 17 days uh, since my last uh, save file uh, between Summer Game Fest and uh, cramming for Frame Trap and... Final Fantasy and all this other stuff that have been going on. It's been a minute uh, since uh, I've been in Zelda. Uh, a couple of things uh, that I did before that happened. Just quickies real quick. Um, uh, I, u I tried out a metal bud on a talus, a battle talus with all the guys on top of it. And it was just, that was fun to just watch him just shake everybody off and fling them across the countryside into the river and stuff. Um, and then, uh, I had found this, uh, this mini game, uh, with a Goron, uh, which I was, like, surprised. I, yeah, I was, like, I was just climbing this, uh, this thing for some other reason. And I heard the Goron music. I'm like, what the heck? And I go up there and there's, like, this thing where you ring a bell and you've got to, like, figure out the best way to ring the bell with all of these different parts and stuff. Uh, and I had tried a few different things, uh, with rockets or whatever. And then eventually put like this big like l like lever together with a big metal ball and a, one of those stabilizers and then as soon as I hit the stabilizer I just like swung it uh, the momentum hit that bell real hard and pressed that Goron uh, but into the real meat of where we're starting uh, really this series I, I decided to go essentially back where we left off when this series started. Uh, and so while we had a couple of like earlier episodes, the series, the reason for me doing it and everything really started when I went down that well and I really got lost in the depths for the first time. And that was like the first like real story that I had uh, out of this game. Um, and, but I, rem if you remember from that episode, episode three, I was, planning i had a plan of things that i was going to do that night <laughs> this whole time we have not done those things so essentially where this episode is is getting back to those things back to where i left off but then again mixing in things that i've learned since then so i went back to that well and from there headed over to um the canyon where the Forgotten Temple was, um, found uh, Impa in there, and uh, you know, and this all relates to the geoglyphs, and found my way deep into the Forgotten Temple, and behind the main like uh, statue of Hylia, uh, there are these other rooms, and this room that's got all the geoglyphs in there, as well as a map for where to find all the geoglyphs, uh, which was really, which was really nice, really little, uh, cool little detail way of, of doing that. Um, and then um, the, yeah, and so, and then the, the plan was that I was going to go from that side quest and then kind of like work my way around to Rito Village. And this ended up being a much longer process than I, I thought because I had wanted to hit a chasm on the way and I, and I hopped down that chasm. Uh, and the funny thing about that was that chasm ended up taking me to a place that I had been when I got sidetracked <laughs> because I, I had walked directly under that chasm without realizing it. Uh, but I, I'd stuck around down there a little bit more because I'd gotten a new um, treasure marker um, and uh, I, I messed around in the depths for a little bit. I found this like trail of statues is one of the things you learn about the depths eventually is that they're like lines of statues that lead to certain things. And this line of statues led to a, a wall. Uh, and then after a little while of like trying to circumnavigate this wall, I, I, you know, I found a light route that like expanded my map and then I could see on my map that like 
this this wall is just it blocks the whole thing off and so i'm gonna have to come in there from above at some point i haven't i still haven't figured that part out yet uh but i, I then i walked wandered my way over to where the the map marker was x marks the spot and uh found the wind waker tunic so i'm getting a nice little collection of these it's 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 fun to see like a lot of these you know i'm pretty sure that like all of them are down here somewhere <laughs> To find all of these different outfits from past Zelda games. Uh, then I got to... Uh, right before the bridge, there was a stable. Uh, and... Uh, it was the first time... Uh, where I actually used uh, the towing harness for something. Where, you know, there was a Korok there. There was, like, a cart there. And so I actually hooked my horse up uh, to the cart and towed the Korok, Korok over to his friend. Which is funny because what we're about to get into <laughs> as we get deeper <laughs> into this session. Um, and then uh, there were, I had seen a geoglyph nearby and I know people have been like, Oh, I know we want to see, want to see Bloodworth do a geoglyph or whatever. And the, the, one of the main reasons that I hadn't really shown it is, is th these things are spoilers like crazy. Like some of them I've come across and I'm just like, uh, Oh, 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 okay. <laughs> That just, that happened. Uh, so we won't talk about that at all. Uh, but this one, um, this one was, yeah, like I said, kind of south east ish of uh, Rito Village and, uh, and, and kind of near the canyon. And this one was funny because um, the, it's like Zelda and Rauru and Sonia just having a chat at a table and she brings up Link and Rao is like, Oh, Link, eh? You know a boy, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I haven't heard this name before. So it was really funny. It was really funny to like, hear him like, kind of starting to ship them or whatever. Um, down in the canyon, I found this mini game where the golf course used to be. There's now this thing called Ultra Ball Hall. And I got obsessed with this for a little bit. Uh, you basically just have to like take this ball and get as far as you can within a time limit with all the stuff that's set up there. So first, I, I you know, I, I drove a little thing. Uh, then I was trying to do the same thing I had done um, with the the bell ringing game, and I like tried to make this lever, and I, like I kept failing at it. Like so, the first time I made the lever, the ball just rolled off of it. It was a complete failure. The second time I like built a box around the ball, but then that box essentially kept the ball from going anywhere, I think. And then uh, the third time I, I like took the top part of the box and like put it at an angle so it would like fling it. Um, and uh, that went really far. But then I didn't have a clue where it went. So I figured that like, okay, this is like, this has got to be the end of like the extent of what I can do with trying to fling this thing. Uh, so then for the, the extended version of, of the trial, uh, I, I, I just built this rocket car and just took it as far as I could. I got it up uh, over 900 meters. Didn't quite break a thousand, but, uh, the Goron was impressed. So we we're good. Um, working my way, continue to work my way up to Rito village. Uh, I found one of the musicians. Now, this is one of the things that I actually had in mind. One of the goals is that I wanted to, to do this musician quest and finally, like, get these fairies to open up. And I just found one on my way. He was there, stuck in a hole. And I, you know, told him to get in the cart. I, I used a recall to pull the cart out of the hole. And uh, he was good, but I hadn't even actually, like, started the quest properly yet. Uh, so we have to catch up with him a little bit later. But it was fun to just be, walk, you know, riding down the, the road and hear this horn and then see him in there. Uh, that was pretty cool. Then, um, did some other things. Uh, got, oh, got a nice little, little slow pan uh, for that Rito overlook. You know, stop there, get some, some shots. Uh, and then I got to, um, one, again, one of my main goals was the, the Lucky Clover Gazette. Uh, and uh, because I knew I needed to get to the newspaper office in order to do this side quest for the musician's quest. Okay, so so I get introduced to the editor-in-chief or whoever she is. 
Uh, we've got Pen there, and then she, you know, basically like recruits me, tells me if we, if we do good enough, we're gonna get that that froggy armor. This froggy armor. I, I've been using the, like the sticky frogs and making the the elixirs and stuff, but no, this is armor that lets you grip in the rain. Um, and so, and what she wants you to do is go out and do all of these quests uh, around all of the different stables and have a pen write about them. So I, I went back to the stable I was just at. Before that, where um, it turned out that there were some uh, some goats had wandered off. So followed a trail of pine cones to go find the goats. Uh, and then I was like, oh, okay, well I can just I can just go to the woodland stable now and find the musicians. And so I get over there um, and their cart was busted down. So I fixed their cart. And then this is what I was saying. It's like, oh, and like here's like actually a place where I need to um, hook up the the uh, the cart to the horse, got the horse up the the hill, and boom! Finally, 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 opened up. Uh, the musicians musicians played uh, for the fairy. She opened up, and then I started going to town, upgrading uh, all of the different armor sets that I could. However, as you know, potentially from the first game, the more of these fairies uh, that you uh, awaken that you find that you unlock the better they can upgrade your armor so this this is now like my goal is to get, to find all the musicians upgrade all or open all the fairies and then upgrade as much armor as I can um, so I went to another place they were playing uh, Epona's theme which was cool um, but they needed the flute player so then I go and I had never been over where the flute player was, so I, I wandered my way over there. Um, the flute player was like standing up at the top of the tree, wanted to impress uh, some other kid. And then, uh, so I had to go find a bunch of fireflies for him, but I just talked to a guy <laughs> who was selling fireflies. So that was nice. Just went over there, bought some fireflies, brought them back. They did a nice, cool little cutscene with the tree glowing. Uh, and I liked that a lot because I don't know, it's like, it's such a simple side quest, but it was still like really like imbued with character that I can't really explain. It just felt like a moment, um, even though it was get some fireflies, bring them back, watch a cutscene. I just, I don't know. I, I, I liked it. It was, it was a cool little, little character moment. Um, uh, so I got the flute player back over to, uh, the next fairy thing. And this was fun because they had, uh, their cart had busted down again, and then you had to take the big wheels and stuff, the Zonai big wheels, and kind of, like, create, uh, this, like, monster truck, basically. You built this monster truck to take them up to the second ferry. So I got the second ferry. I'm, I'm upgrading more armor, but I'm starting to see the cost. The cost is starting to add up. I'm starting to get it, starting to get low on resources and cash. Not quite there yet. Then uh, head over to the third spot uh, where we now we need to find the drummer. Um, and this is where things go a little sideways because I, <laughs> I go up the road to where the drummer is. He says he wants honey from near Kakariko Village. And I've been kind of avoiding, like I haven't been ready to like dive deep into Kakariko and Hatano yet. I had gone to like the research lab to get my... my uh, my Pura pad upgrades or whatever, but I haven't really been around it hot to know that much. Um, and same thing with Kakariko. But I, I, so I was just like, all right, I'm just gonna go get the honey and come back out. That did not happen. That did not work. I ended up getting sucked in to doing things in Kakariko Village. Uh, I met uh, uh, Paya, uh, who is now the, the the chief. I met Taro, who is like a researcher who is like extremely buff for some reason. He's pretty cool. <laughs> um, I met the the guy who uh, translates all the tablets, and so he told me about all that. So it's like, okay, now I can just go take. I see. I take photos of the tablets up in the sky because I'd run across these things before, uh, and then I bring the photos back to him, and he'll translate. So that was cool. Uh, but then there's this sick grandma there, made porridge for her, bought a bunch of clothes in the shop. Uh, then I started like going through all the ruins and getting, you know, like catching up on all the ring ruins and all that lore and everything. 
Uh, so I was just doing all this stuff. In between there, I did actually manage to get some honey. <laughs> I got some, some beehives. Um, but uh, there's so many funny little side quests in there that I was like just trying to like finish up Kakariko Village before taking the honey back. Uh, including one with like the chickens had gone missing. They would be around in the day, but they're like, we don't know where they're laying the eggs. We can't, we don't have any eggs in the store. Uh, and, and I was, I was trying to find them in the morning and I basically, I guess had just missed them because I was wandering around looking for the chickens, looking for the chickens, couldn't find them. And then I saw like this line of chickens coming downhill down these steps and like, what, where were you guys at? And so I went up the hill, tried to find them. It didn't work. So then I waited till the next night and had to wait overnight and do this like chicken stakeout. And yes, I know they're cuckoos, whatever. They're chickens, you know. You know, they're cuckoos or chickens. They're the same thing. Uh, <laughs> and so I stake out these chickens and I follow them up the hill, follow them to this hole in the wall and, and the nest uh, and get all of those eggs and everything. So that was fun. That was fun. Anyways... That distraction aside, I went down uh, back to the to get the the, the drummer. Um, we get the whole crew reassembled. Uh, now we have to take the cart and essentially turn it into a boat. Uh, so that was fun, and uh, and and uh, used some fans, did a little fan boat thing, and, and drove them over to the third ferry, uh, and then. Um, yeah, really starting to hit my wallet at this point, uh, but it was fun. Then the, yeah, then I had to go back up north, actually kind of close to where the well was again, found where they were for the last ferry. And uh, this one where you had to like build uh, a roof uh, to get them through the snow on the cart. Uh, and I get there and by this point I'm just, I'm wiped out. I've got, I've got nothing else. Uh, to give this ferry <laughs> to upgrade anything further. However, we're prepared. I've got a lot of stuff, a lot of armor. I've had a lot of stockpile of goods, so I was really able to like get like lots of things upgraded and ready to go. And so I won't just like get one shot at <laughs> essentially. That was the way it was. I was like, I was having to like bring a lot of food with me everywhere because I would get hit and like all my hearts would be gone. I was like, dang it. <laughs> But a lot of my stuff is like now, like I've got some things that are like eights and twelves uh, instead of threes and fours and like one five that I had in terms of my defense. So that was nice. Um, and that was essentially the main thing that I was looking to do is, is get that musician quest done. And yes, I did get over to uh, Rito Village and met Tulin and I'm ready to take that quest on. But there's so many other things, you know, that to dabble in, right? There's like... Now that I've, I've got all these different <laughs> things to explore, you know, I've got to, I've got to find all these, these tablets. I've got to go to all of these stables now and do all these newspaper quests. I'm pretty close to finishing up all the sky towers. I did some more sky towers and some more geoglyphs that have more spoilery stuff uh, than I would show you. Um, but we're pretty much, we're there. We're at the end of the Bloodworth Diaries for now. At this point, we'll move on. Um, I'll be continuing to play the game, of course. Um, and, and if there is a night when I just have a story to tell, I'll, I'll keep the, the capture and stuff hooked up. If there's a story that comes up and it's like, ah, oh, I got I got I just, I gotta tell somebody. I gotta do it. Then maybe we will. Um, but I'm also gonna be traveling, uh, next month. And so I imagine I will play a lot of Zelda when I'm there and maybe try to beat it there. <laughs> We've got three temples left. Uh, but like I said, we're doing exploration, discovery, experimentation, all that good stuff. Hopefully, even though this is long, hopefully it wasn't too breezy. I was kind of like zipping through some of that stuff. So hopefully it like actually felt like stories. Um, I will say that like, I really dug uh, this, this, this quest line with the musicians. It was a fun way to like get the band back together and do all that stuff. And I really enjoyed it and I've, I felt that way about, uh, you know, a lot of these, these quests is like, even though they're fairly simple in what they do again, they just, yeah, they feel like they've got some, some heart in them. So I'm very much appreciating that. And, uh, and I'm geared up, I'm prepared. I'm ready to go through, uh, the rest of this game. 
So thank you to everybody who has been watching Blood Wars Zelda Diaries. Um, uh, support us on uh, Patreon. Uh, we really need that support. Uh, it is the thing that keeps us going month in and month out. Uh, and, you know, beyond the, the odd potential of another diary popping up out of the blue, maybe we'll do this again for something. You know, maybe, uh, you know, I'm, I'm looking at Starfield and I'm thinking that might be the time for more diaries. So keep an eye open and thank you very much for watching and we will see you very soon.